I started feeling this emptiness where I felt lost all the time. I just felt like I was doing things to do things. I didn't mm -hmm. know what my purpose was. I didn't even want to be here, to be honest. I really did not enjoy my life. And I started this journey of seeking. And somehow I knew that whatever I was looking for, I didn't know what it was. I knew it was in church. And I started on my own just going to church all the time. Um, and I think because of what Lebo had showed me, and she was this lady that I met in church, maybe that's what told me that that's where to find this thing. Um, nothing was satisfying me. Like my friends were like, it was nice to be around them, but I, I just, I wasn't happy the way that I knew I could be happy. I started going to church and I went to church every day. This is a period where I had finished um, matric and was going to uh, varsity. You have this nine month period where you are waiting to go to school. I went to church every single day, like every day. And my friends were asking me, what are you doing in church every day? Like there's not even church on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, what are you doing there? And I told them, no, I just enjoy it. I would go there to work in the library and help them out and help the children's discipleship um, teachers cut up little papers and they said no there's no way people go to church that way you're probably even dating the the youth pastor and i said no i really i promise you i enjoy it so my name is bibi i am originally from botswana but i currently live in pretoria and denwood and i would say the fondest memory i have of my childhood would be playing with my brothers I have two brothers, an older brother and a younger brother. And also we would go to my dad's village and visit my grandmother and play with my cousins. I have about over 15 cousins. And back in the village that we come from back then, when we didn't have electricity and water, it was so amazing for us to play until it got super dark and then have to go and buy paraffin to put into the um, little lamps and sit around the fire and tell all these stories and scary stories. And also just um, going to get water in the middle of the village and getting a wheelbarrow with these big buckets. And it was such an experience. So I think those were my fondest memories that I wouldn't trade for anything. When I was um, 12, I lost my, my dad and we were very close. We were raised by my dad from birth until I was 12 years old when he passed. Um, my mom lived away from us because she, we lived in a mine town. My dad worked at the mine and the town was too small for my mom to, to find a job at. I think she'd reached her max, her, her cap in that industry. So we were raised by my dad. He was a single dad, I would almost say and we had an amazing relationship with him he was very hands-on um, amazing amazing man and for me losing him was heartbreaking it was very difficult and after he passed also just the transition that we had to um, go through my mom coming back and um, moving us from that mine town because we couldn't live there anymore we lived in a mine house we went to a mine school so we had to leave and um, move to the city and had to sort of find a new rhythm of life and you know go to new schools meet new friends which was very difficult because um, still going through that grieving process and then having to adjust to this new life it was very difficult um, it took a few years for me to sort of adjust and sort of find my feet um, I would say who God brought into my life at that time to bring me comfort um, was a lady I remember at a church that I went to in my teens, early teens. Um, her name was Lebo um, and she was just, she was one of the youth um, coordinators and she just took an interest in me for some reason. I don't know, maybe she saw this girl's looks really sad, something's wrong with her. and. Um, she asked me to come and join youth one day and said um, you don't need to go to big church because I really wasn't getting anything out of it and I enjoyed it. I just loved being around pe my peers, people my age um, who were going through struggles um, similar to mine and there was something that I saw in her and she just had this love that she exuded and she just was a happy person and I, I, I wanted that so, so desperately but I didn't know how to find it. Um, 
I think she was specifically the one person that I can think of um, who, who, who led me to Christ, who showed me who Christ is. And later when I moved to a different church, um, I wanted that thing that I saw in Lebo. And that's what I seeked for and I found it in Christ. It's, it's, it's important to say life doesn't become this smooth sailing after you become a Christian. Um, you still have your challenges. Um, but I think the difference is um, being, walking with God is you constantly have these reminders and these um, promises that you know that God has given you, um, that he continues to walk with you. He is definitely, he will meet you where you are all the time. Like it doesn't matter what struggles you're going through. Um, so I think that's always encouraging to let people know that um, it's not going to be an easy journey. Um, the moment you give your life to Christ, know that it will, there's, there's ups and downs. We know that, um, we know that seasons, there's different seasons, there's going to be joy, there's going to be hurt, there's going to be grief, there's going to be all kinds of different um, um, situations that you fall into. Um, I would say I am excited because um, already what I have been exposed to in this journey that I'm walking in has been amazing and obviously looking at the future it can only get better and um, and just the space that I'm in in the community that I'm in they've shown me and just living openly among the people that I live with um, I know that there's better I've seen that there's better and I know that I, I will never fall and no one help me help me up again and that's what excites me I'm walking with amazing ladies who um, I've got in my accountability group I've got two white ladies and three black ladies including myself and we we come at each other with so much vulnerability and just what we go through on, on, on a daily basis um, our hurts our struggles um, our joys and how we can just lift each other up and you know pray for each other and um, talk each other through it and just the constant accountability of reaching out um, to one another and ensuring each other that we're okay. I mean, as long as we have Christ, we will get through it.